your famous treasury secretary in the 1930s, Andrew Mellon. Um, yes. I quite like his one of his famous quotes. He says that crisis is always good because in a crisis, the assets always come back to its original owner, i.e. him, the rich people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, that's, that's right. So like, do you think like these people really love crisis? Oh, no, 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 no. They hate them. They hate them. Because every one of these crises becomes a challenge. Because there are always people like me. Mm. And I'm happy to tell you I am not unique. I am not alone. I'm not isolated. I have more colleagues, more people like me working here in the United States than at any time in my lifetime. And I was born here in the United States. Mm. I mean, if, if you, if, if there were, there is no such thing, but if there were a measure of the strength of criticism of capitalism, mm. I've never seen it as strong as it is right now. Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't this strong in the 1960s. The last time you had this kind of a, was the 1930s the great crisis of the Great Depression. Mm. And so, I no, I don't, I, I think that's bravado. I think Mr. Mellon was trying in the midst of the 30s to act like they all had it under control. They didn't. You know, the politics of the world, including Great Britain, is shaped by what happened in the 1930s. We are still living that, that experience. The 1930s was a complete, collapse of capitalism people have to understand between 1929 october when it begins and basically 1940 41 when mm. what finally lifts us out of the depression was war the second world war in that period of time industry in the united states collapsed the unemployment rate in 1933 was 25 percent one out of every four workers was without work, which means every single family had either a mother, a father, a cousin, an uncle, somebody who was out of work, had mm. no income because we had no unemployment insurance then, mm. and so had to lean on savings, which they didn't have, or to lean on other members of the family at a time when they were terrified about what was happening to their jobs. And their, I mean, it was a catastrophe. And in that catastrophe, the American working class went to the left, very important, not to the right. That's what they're doing now. But in the 1930s, they went to the left. You had explosion of the greatest labor organizing uh, period in American history. In a matter of five years, you organized tens of millions of Americans these people had never been in a union before. Oh. Their parents had never been in a union. They had no experience. No, no, They joined the unions to save themselves. And allied with the unions were two socialist parties and a communist party. And they were large and they were strong and they worked together, even though they had disagreements. You know, the Trotsky, Stalin, all that stuff. Hmm. They worked together and they produced a left-wing turn. They went to the president, Roosevelt, and they said to him, you have to help the mass of people in this country in this depression. If you do, we will make you the most successful president in the country's history. And if you don't, you won't be elected to be the official dog catcher in this country. You're finished. That's what they told him. Mm. And he was a good politician. He understood that they were able to mobilize 30 to 40 million votes. He mm. could not, he could not say no. So he went back. He was a billion, you know, he was a millionaire of that time. Uh, he, he, he was a descendant of the Roosevelt family that had another president earlier, et cetera, et cetera. So he went to his people, his business associates, told them what he had been told and said, OK, I've got to take care of the people. 
And the government has no money because we have millions of people unemployed. Nobody's paying taxes. So the only place I can go to get the money, he looks around the room, is you. You rich people have the money. So you're going to have to give me the money that I'm going to spend to take care of the mass of people. Half of the people he spoke to thought he had lost his mind and walked out of the room. The other half listened to him, and he said the following, you better give me half your money, because if you don't, we're going to have a revolution here, and you're not going to have any money at all. Mm -hmm. They were frightened. They gave him the money. Here's what he did, just to remind you. He created the social security system. This country had had absolutely no public pension system at all. So that was created in the middle of a Great Depression when the government had no money. It declared everybody who reaches the age of 65, we will give you a check every month for the rest of your life, no matter how long you live. Mm -hmm. Number two. They passed the first minimum wage law. No employer can pay less. And in those days, it was a significant amount of money. Number three, they set up the first unemployment compensation program. If you lose your job for no reason of your own fault, just because the employer uh, can't sell what he produces, mm -hmm. the government will give you for a year or two a weekly check. And then the fourth and final one. He went on the radio, Roosevelt did, and he said, anybody uh, who only asks for a job, if the private capitalist sector of this economy cannot or will not give you a decent paying job, then I as president will. And he immediately set about hiring roughly 15 million unemployed people, putting mm -hmm. them to work building and rebuilding across the U.S. When the left wing says it can't mobilize its people, or even if it did, it can't get improvements, those are improved. We still have Social Security. We still have unemployment compensation. And that's after the war was over and after Roosevelt is dead, 1945, the rest of our politics from then to now has been the concerted effort of the business community to undo everything that was done in the 1930s. Yeah. And that, that includes Trump and Biden and uh, Obama and all of them. And that's our politics. And our left has to rebuild itself to be the next wave coming back and saying, oh, no, 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 no. Mm. And I don't, if you ask me, will it take another collapse like the 1930s yeah. to give yeah. us the momentum? Then the honest answer is maybe. Mm. And maybe that's where we are going. Because we are we are in an economy now, I really have to tell you, that is the worst I have seen. Every every so often, because I'm a graduate of Harvard and Yale and all, I'm, I'm part of the elite school system here, even though I'm not part of that by, by my family or anything like that. I occasionally get together for to drink a beer or to have a cup of coffee or something with these people that are, otherwise I do not interact with them. And here's the interesting thing. We don't agree on how the United States got into its current situation, and we don't agree on how to get out of it. But we do agree on the following sentence. This is the worst condition of the American capitalist system that we have ever seen in our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. That's how bad this is. You have attacked the working class here on a scale that, you know, is understandable. The pendulum swings. The mm -hmm. ruling class was so 
horrified by what happened in the 30s. Their taxes, their money used to help average people, you know, un un unthinkable. They may go too far. It often happens. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are in the process. They have redistributed the wealth here for 30 to 40 years. That's why we have more billionaires, mm -hmm. just like you. They have done. And then in the last four years, first, they hit the American working class with a depression in 2020. Very important to understand. The economy here crashed. By the way, it started crashing before COVID got here. You mm. can call the crash COVID, but mm. it's the mistake. It's a crash. Mm. Between in the years 2020 and 2021, over 80 million Americans went unemployed, lost their jobs. That's more than half. Mm. More than half the people were now, some of them were unemployed only a few weeks, some the whole time. Hmm. But we've never had that before. More than half the people were unemployed, wiping out their savings, hmm. wiping out their sense of themselves. Uh, it's just awful. Then we had the pandemic, where the response in this country was so bad that we've we've lost over a million people dead from COVID and tens of millions ill some of them suffering with what we call long COVID and so forth. Then we had, and we're still in it, a terrible inflation. Mm. And as I'm speaking to you, yesterday the Federal Reserve pushed up again the interest rates. The inflation is an attack on the working class. The depression was, the COVID failure was, now interest rates rising is another attack. You are consistently attacking a working class and i am very confident in telling you that the tolerance of this working class for this kind of abuse is coming to an end you can already see it that's why they voted for trump mm. that's why we have the bitter divisions in this country that is why the desperate people trying to hold on are rediscovering white supremacy, actually telling each other that the color of your skin is a sign of something significant. Uh, you know, th that's a desperate behavior of desperate people who are terrified about what's looming around them. Americans are in that place now. And mm -hmm. I, I can assure you, I, I can't tell you where the future lies. Nobody can. But I am telling you that capitalism has moved on. The dynamic center is in Asia at this point anyway. Um, and the, the problem in this country is it doesn't understand what's going on. And it practices mostly the sad skill that psychologists call denial, the mm -hmm. pretending that it isn't happening. And which is, by the way, again, just another way of saying that's what your celebration of the Queen's passing, if that's the right word. Mm. It's a desperate trying to hold on to the symbolism because all of the reality is gone. Mm.